United with Christ. Meet local churches with open doors serving throughout the Border Valley community and sharing the truth and hope of God's love and salvation. A presentation by KSCE Channel 38 Christian Television. And now, United with Christ. Hi, God bless you. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Albert Ibarra. I'm the Executive Director of Teen Challenge here in El Paso. And with me is Betty Aguilar, our Women's uh, Program Director. And we just thank the Lord for the opportunity He's given us to share what God is doing uh, in the ladies' lives that uh, are at Teen Challenge. As, uh, those of you who may not know, Teen Challenge El Paso is a women's residential program, a uh, live-in residential facility. It's 10 to 12 months, and it's a uh, uh, 8 to 12-bed uh, facility as well. And and we work with women 18 years of age and older, and, and Betty's going to be talking a little bit about that as well. But, you know, there's a video clip we want to show. There's a DVD clip that we want to show. It's a brief clip, just an overview of Teen Challenge, what we do, and then we're going to be talking more about that. But we'd like to show you that clip uh, at this time. saw was because of your prayers and your support what we do it's see it's not teen challenge it's what God is doing through God's people like yourselves those of you who pray for us and support us on a monthly basis and and uh, that's why our banquet that's coming up is so very important you see we don't charge the ladies any money to come in we don't have any work programs where we send them out to uh, to stores or to uh, street corners to sell candies and all that and no disrespect to those ministries that that do that I'm not saying that but what I'm trying to say is that we don't charge them we don't we don't make them do things to raise money uh, you know what the word says seek first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and everything else shall be uh, taken care of and our desire first is to glorify the Lord and and these ladies that he brings into our care you know the there's a lot of one-on-one -on -one ministry going on we have uh 
over 20 volunteers that represent over 15 different churches here in El Paso. And if you're interested to becoming a volunteer, well, call our office, talk to Betty, and, and uh, we would be glad to, uh, to have you on board. And we do ask for a pastor's endorsement letter. You know, we ask for mature believers who are faithful, uh, you know, faithful in the local church whom the pastor says, man, you, you know, we have a church member who wants to help out. And, and we do training as well. We do effective biblical counseling training. We do the PSNC training. We train volunteers to be able to teach our curriculum as well. Uh, we have an awesome curriculum that comes from the national office. We spend over 40 hours a week in Bible study. Uh, we give them group Bible studies, individual Bible studies. They learn character qualities, uh, 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 how to study the Bible. The group studies are anger and personal rights, uh, how to handle temptation, growing through failure. So many things that deal with the individual. Uh, the individual, you know, we fall in love with the Lord, and, and but now, now what, Lord? How do I learn to follow you? And, and what does it mean uh, uh, to be a Christian? How do I act? How do I talk? And all these things we try to teach there at Teen Challenge. There's a passage I want to share that talks about what we do, our, our emphasis. It's in uh, 1 Peter, uh, 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 1, 2, and 3. And this is where it says, Therefore, rid yourselves of all malice and all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and slander of every kind. Like newborn babies crave pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow up in your salvation, now that you have tasted that the Lord is good. You see, when the students come in, Betty does an awesome interview process with the ladies and because so many times people want to come into Teen Challenge for the wrong reasons. You know, uh, the Lord says, deny yourselves, pick up your cross and follow. You know, if they don't want to follow the Lord, then Teen Challenge isn't for them. This isn't about an adult daycare facility. This isn't a drug and alcohol rehab program. This is a discipleship ministry that is here for the local church. No matter what denominational background uh, an individual may come from, the important thing is they need Jesus Christ to help them overcome those things in their lives they're struggling with. And so when they come in, they learn to fall in love with the Lord. Somewhere along in the program, they have that encounter with Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit comes and he, uh, it's like in the book of John, he says the Holy Spirit comes to, uh, to bring, uh, you know, he convicts the world of sin, judgment, and righteousness. You know, convicts them of their sin and they realize their need of a savior, of repenting of their sins and, and turning to Christ and giving their lives to Jesus Christ. But then comes the most important part, learning how to follow, how to walk in his ways, in his steps. And what does it mean to be a Christian? You see, we try to teach our, our students that when they go back out in the community, that they don't have to tell people they're a Christian. That they can say, hey, you're different. What is it? Then they can say, well, it's because I'm a Christian. Because so many of our students come in from many backgrounds and they, they're, they're living their lives with sinful life patterns and, and sinful behaviors. And they come to the Lord and, and they realize getting off of drugs and alcohol is the easiest thing. Learning how to live the Christian life is the hardest thing. Learning how to be nice to people when you were just angry and, and, and always mean. Learning how to be gentle and, and, and loving and, and merciful, you know. And, and these are things that, that we teach them there in our group Bible studies, our individual Bible studies. It is awesome to see uh, the Holy Spirit doing a work of God's grace in, in the hearts of these ladies. You see, as they prepare for the rest of their lives beyond Teen Challenge, there's a passage I want to share from 1 Corinthians 13, 11. 1 Corinthians 13, 11 uh, says, When I was a child, I talked. Notice what he's talking about. When I was a child, not just a little toddler, you know, some, some adults act like children all the time. I was kicking and screaming and, and throwing their tantrums. Oh, oh, I'm preaching now. But, you know, this is very important because so many times our students come to the Lord. They come to Teen Challenge. They give, to, give their lives to the Lord. And, but they, they, they still need to learn how to talk. They, uh, you know, how to talk to Christian talk. You know, and uh, uh, look what it says again. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. But when I became a mature person, I put childish ways behind me. And see, this is a part about that relationship with Jesus Christ that we teach at Teen Challenge. You see, we have a person, we have the, the ladies with us on average really seven to eight, nine months. Because then they go to the last phase of Teen Challenge where they, you know, they get plugged into a local church and they find work and all that. And sometimes our students struggle in the last phase because they're not getting plugged into a local church. That's why we tell them, you know, Teen Challenge is, is, is not a, 
a ministry aside from the local church. We need the local church. You know, Jesus says, I will build my church. And so we're just a tool of yours, Pastor. You know, if you have, if you do evangelism or you have a, a member of the church who's just struggling with a prescription drug abuse and, and whatever it is, uh, alcoholism, you know, uh, a drug addiction, whatever it may be, we're here as a tool of yours. And, and we, we help them fall in love with Jesus. We help them overcome these things through a relationship with Jesus Christ. We teach them about personal relationship, a personal uh, accountability. Today we live in a world where every, there's an entitlement mentality. Uh, you owe me this, you owe me that. You know what? We don't owe God anything. We owe him everything. God doesn't owe us anything. Jesus doesn't owe us nothing. We owe him everything. And that sometimes to some people is a, man, it blows their mind that, you, you know, it, it blows their mind. And we teach them about that personal responsibility, accountability to the Lord, and getting plugged into the local church. You know, by the time they get ready to complete Teen Challenge, they've been in there. They, we've been giving them Bible studies and all. They go to local churches. And, Pastor, if you're watching or you're a church member from a local church and, and you would like Teen Challenge to come and visit, attend your church, well, get a hold of Betty and, and she would be glad to schedule a, a church service or to attend your church. And Because you know what? These ladies are beginning to experience what the local church uh, looks like, what the body of Christ looks like. They go to different churches. Some people clap. Some people hoop and holler. Some people are very stoic. They're very quiet, serene. You know, hey, that's okay. Amen. The body of Christ is made up of many different parts. Amen. And so, but the ladies begin to see how big the body of Christ is. They start going to different churches and realize, hey, church isn't just five people in a lo little local church. And the church of Jesus Christ is alive and well. The church of God is alive and well and it's huge and it's active. And, and there's church members who love the Lord all over the place. And our, and our students begin to see that and they realize, hey, wait a minute. It's because they isolated themselves and they allowed sinful people around their lives to influence in them. And then they forget how big the body of Christ is and how important the local church is. But one thing happens right before they begin to, uh, right before they graduate. There's a passage I want to read and we talked to the, our students about this. It's in the book of Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. Chapter 11 verses 24 through 26. It, and it reads like this in Hebrews uh, 11, 24 to 26. Follow along. This is talking about Moses. Uh, awesome, awesome position. It says, by faith, verse 24, Hebrews eleven twenty four. 24. I'm reading from the NIV. It says, by faith, Moses, when he had grown up, notice that, when he had grown up, you know, sometimes so many people in church, you know, they've grown old, but they haven't grown up. And, and you know what? I'm not trying to be uh, mean or anything. And this isn't about being mean. It's the reality. Some people have been in church for a long time and, and they've yet to mature in the Lord. We just read that in 1 Corinthians 13, 11. And what we try to do at Teen Challenge is say, you know what? It's time to grow up. You ladies are over 18 years of age. You're not an 11, 12, 13 year old anymore. Some of them are grown women with children. It's time now to be responsible, to be the mother. If the husband is run off and is being irresponsible, you know, shame on him. We're praying for husbands to be men of God that God called them to be. And you know what? If you're praying out there, help us pray that we can start our men's Teen Challenge up again. Our men's residential teen challenge because I, 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 I want to work with men. I, I want them to learn to be the responsible men God called them to be. You know, to stop running and trying to act like, uh, you know, oh man. Anyway, <laughs> but Hebrews eleven twenty four, By faith, Moses, when he had grown up, refused to be known as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Wow. Being known as the son of Pharaoh's daughter, he had chariots he had all kinds of stuff at his disposal but you know what he refused to be known as the son of pharaoh's daughter why he chose to be mistreated along with the people of god rather than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a short time verse 25 is awesome he made a choice he he chose to be mistreated was he a glutton for punishment no it's 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 because he had a vision. He knew who he was. He chose to be mistreated along with the people of God rather than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a short time. And teen challenge. When students come in, 
There's no successful drug addicts. There's no successful prostitutes. There's no successful winos, alcoholics, sinful uh, individuals. Sin does its damage. It destroys and it kills. We've had to do funerals for former students at Teen Challenge, men and women in our programs. This is serious. Sin is not a game. It doesn't, sin doesn't have any parameters. It doesn't say, sin doesn't say I'm only going this far and then that's it. Sin has no parameters. It's going to do what it's supposed to do until it kills you. And so when our students come in, they're hurting and sin has done its damage. You see, because at first, when we first, there's pleasure in sin. It feels good to do sneaky things. It feels good to do a little something here and then. It, you get this adrenaline rush that, wow, you know, and, and all this little sneakiness and things. But you know what? Once sin has you, it's not going to let you go. It ties you up in chains. And only the blood of Jesus that God, that Jesus Christ shed on the cross can break those chains of addiction. It's only that personal relationship. You see, Moses chose to be mistreated rather than to enjoy the pleasures of sin. You know what? Moses could have enjoyed a lot of things as being the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He had those harems. He had chariots and he had all kinds of stuff. He had slaves and all this. But he chose not to because he wasn't focusing on that. And when we tell our students, you know what? We don't play with sin. Sin is nothing to be played with because once you dab a little bit with that, with that old drug addiction thing that you, you, they were playing with and got, had them in bondage, then they go right back. You see, they don't go back to the beginning. They pick up where they left off. But look what, look what Moses did in verse, 20, in, in verse 26. He regarded disgrace for the sake of Christ as of greater value. Greater value in following Jesus and what all people are going to say. Man, you blew it. You did this. You did this. And you know what? And he says, you know what? Because his eyes were on the Lord. He regarded disgrace for the sake of Christ as of greater value than the treasures of Egypt. Wow. Treasures of Egypt. Can you imagine? Gold chains and gold and all this kind of stuff and all that. But he regarded his relationship with Christ as of greater value. You see, fellow Christian. We need to put our eyes on the Lord. This thing about putting it on the world and, 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 and having an, an attaining, all that. I mean, you know what? You know, I've been serving the Lord over 30 years. I've been in the ministry for so many years. It's time to put this child, these things aside and start serving God and following him the way he wants us to. The treasures of Egypt, the treasures of this world is not important. It's about the treasures in heaven. God says, store up your treasures in heaven. What are the treasures of heaven? Worship and prayer and praising the Lord and leading people to Christ and, and, and sharing the love of Jesus with those who need Jesus. Those are the treasures that God is talking about. Because why? Because he was looking ahead to his reward. You see, so many of us, if we're, as Christians, if we're not careful, we're looking at our reward down here. And it's not down here. It's in heaven. We need to put our focus and vision in heaven, amen, upon the Lord and, and, and being with God. One day going home with the Lord. Looking ahead to his reward. By faith he left Egypt. Not fearing the king's anger. You see sometimes the fear of man keeps us from doing the will of God. Some of these ladies that come into Teen Challenge. They're learning about the fear of God. They're learning to separate the fear of man from the fear of God. And they're learning you know what to love God. Through a personal relationship with him. And that's what we're talking about in Teen Challenge, about a personal relationship. That clip you saw, you know what? It's only possible because of your prayers and your support. Our banquet is coming up, and, and Betty's going to talk a little bit about that as well. We have a silent auction, uh, a Chinese auction, and we have centerpieces and all that. And, and it's not about making money. It's about giving God all the honor and the glory. There's going to be seven or eight ladies who are going to get their completion certificates. And, and you know what? It, to God be the glory. Not what Teen Challenge is doing. We don't do nothing. You know, too many times people are so prideful talking about their ministry, this, their ministry, that. You know what? Your ministry is nothing without Jesus Christ. It's God. Amen. And it's the Lord Jesus. And, and, and we live in a time right now where it's all about the Lord. Amen. Forget about this stuff. Uh, this world is falling apart. The world needs to see Jesus. And they want, the world needs to see it in us and you and I. And Betty, can you share a little bit with us about the banquet that's mm -hmm. coming up and, and, and just uh, the churches that are, that are buying tickets and, and uh, just uh, share with us. 
a little bit about yes, that. Yes, of course. Thank you, Pastor, and thank you for listening. And I would love to share with you about our, our banquet. We're actually very excited about our banquet coming up. We have the, um, the president of uh, Teen Challenge uh, International that's going to be with us. And we're really looking forward to hear what he has to say. We have a, a lot of exciting things going on. Like Pastor mentioned, we have the silent auction and the Chinese auction. We have some awesome things uh, at the silent auction, like tickets to Disneyland and uh, Southwest Airline tickets and uh, a party at Bobbles, which comes with uh, for 10 children. And, you know, it's your entry fee, the food, the games. Um, so if you don't like planning for a party, this is a chance to get your party already prepaid and, and ready. So you just show up. Uh, we have a lot of exciting things also with our Chinese auction and uh, our centerpieces are beautiful. And, you know, like Pastor was saying, it's not about making money, uh, but it's about uh, continuing to build what God is doing there at Teen Challenge. You know, uh, as we know that uh, we, we walk by faith. And we trust in the Lord to provide, and he is so faithful to provide each and every day for the ladies, not only a place to stay, but also the food to eat. You know, everything that requires for, for you to make it day by day with the clothes and uh, soap and food and just everything, um, God provides each and every day. He's so faithful providing but, you know, there are bills to be paid, and, and this is what, what uh, the banquet helps for, is to help us to continue and, and finish out the year, and then your support and the support of the churches. Uh, we thank you so much because we truly could not do it without you, without our volunteers. Um, our volunteers, if you're interested and you have a heart for women, we do ask for mature Christian women to come in and uh, help. And I can give you information if you would call me at 566-1197, as well as about the banquet, about everything that's going to be taking place, how you can take um, get tickets for the banquet if you want to sponsor uh, a table. Maybe you can't come, but you would like to help. You can also help by sponsoring a table so that someone who um, wants to come and maybe get information about the program so that we can have them come. Uh, but give us a call and I can give you a lot more information on that. Uh, the Chinese auction, what that's about, uh, we're already uh, actually selling tickets for that. If you're interested, you can call. You do not need to be present to win. Uh, there's a lot of really neat um, items there as well. And I'll be sharing with um, with you some of those items as, as we get closer to the banquet. Um, but, you know, Pastor was mentioning... Um, a lot of scriptures today he did talk about uh getting rid of, of of things that so heavily the bible says it's so heavily um sometimes we carry in they entangle us and and sometimes even cause us to fall short and you know at teen challenge the ladies like he said we have uh, a study uh, 40 hours and sometimes even more a week of bible study and and this is where the ladies come and and they learn to get a hold of god because each one of us have a journey to walk and we all walk our journey wanting to be more like Christ and wanting to live like he wants us to live. But you know, it's not um, as hard as we sometimes make it. Sometimes we wanna do that on our own flesh, on our own understanding, on the way we think we should walk the Christian walk. So when the ladies come to Teen Challenge, this is what they learn. And the one thing they learn is that it's not through our own strength because we can never do that. It's only through the Spirit of God that gives us strength. And I just want to share real quickly with you the scripture that talks about that. And it's in Colossians 1, 9. And I'm going to read to you from the message. It says, from 9 to 12, it says, Be assured that from the first day we heard of you, we, have, we haven't stopped praying for you, asking God to give you wise minds and spirits attuned to his will. And so acquire a thorough understanding of the ways in which God works. We pray that you will live well for the master, making him proud of you as you work hard in his orchard. As you learn more and more how God works, you will learn how to do your work. We pray that you'll have the strength to stick it out over the long haul. Not to grim, the, this is the part I'm talking about. It says, not the grim strength of gritting your teeth, 
but the glory strength God gives. It is strength that endures the unendurable and spills over into joy, thanking the Father who makes us strong enough to take part in everything bright and beautiful that he has for us. So you see, it's not in our strength, but in the strength that God gives us. And this is what the ladies are learning is to live their life in God's strength because only through his strength can they overcome. So we thank you um, for your support once again, and we encourage you to call. Call if you need prayer. We'd love to pray with you. I'd love to tell you how to get into the program. Once again, remember the program is absolutely free. You don't need insurance. You don't need money. All you need to do is make the call, and I would be glad to share with you about the program and how you can get your loved one in if they need help. Hey Amen. Thank you, Betty. You know, in conclusion, I just want to share something right quick about our banquet. It's going to be held at Grace Gardens uh, in the Upper Valley at 6701 Westside Drive. And it's Friday, October 28th uh, 20, uh, this year uh, from 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. And tickets are $45 uh, a person and $460 for a table of eight. Our speaker again is going to be Dr. Joseph Batluck, uh, the Teen Challenge International President. He's the president of Teen Challenge and he's a retired Army Colonel. He retired as a chaplain. So uh, he's going to be sharing what God is doing uh, throughout the U.S. and our Teen Challenge Centers, what we're seeing happening, what's coming in, and, and the things that we're seeing in our facilities and our men's and women's and adolescent centers. So please come down. And if you're a, a soldier at Fort Bliss and, and you know the Lord, and you know what, I think this would be a good time to come and, and meet our, our uh, Army Chaplain. Amen. For 30 years, an Army Chaplain and retired as a Colonel. And uh, he's going to be here with us. And we just want to thank you so very much for, uh, for being with us and, and praying for us. Uh, if you want to send a donation, it's to P.O. Box 640008, El Paso, Texas, 79904. And we want to thank you again, and God bless you. Thank you for watching United with Christ. We pray this has been a blessing to you, and we invite you to tune in again tomorrow. We invite your comments, questions, or prayer requests. You may contact us at KSEE Christian Television, 2201 East Wyoming Avenue, El Paso, Texas, 79903, or call us at 915-532-8588 during regular business hours, or you can visit us on our website at www.kse.com. God bless you.